Hi, I have now had my Prusa MK4 MMU free for three weeks. And uh, this is what I have printed. And just to have a look at the printer, I have it here in an enclosure. I'm printing both in PETG and ABS. And in this video, we are going to see the result of the, this, both my success and my failures, which are in the back here. So let's go through it and have a look at all the stuff. So let's first start how I was printing before getting my, um, my MMU. So if we can just see if I can find the right one. So here we have an Orca Killer Whale. This is printed without uh, MMU. It's uh, where all the white is first printed and then the black and then it's all glued together. And you can see one of my mistakes here that there's too much glue. Um, so that's all good. I think that's a fine baseline. There was a lot of waste because I had to make a lot of support around here uh, when pl while printing the black. Okay, so uh, the very first thing I printed on my MMU, or maybe my second first thing, uh, was this one to compare with. So this is pr printed in one piece on the MK4 plus MMU. And uh, compared to gluing it myself together, then of course it fits better, nicer together. But uh, what was the first thing I learned? Let's see if we can zoom in. And uh, if we look here, then the colors are not consistent because I did not uh, purge enough material. And therefore uh, the white is a little black sometimes. So uh, I of course learned from that mistake and uh, purged more on my second print. But let's just see. Unfortunately, I cannot find my purge. Oh, I had a purge tower with all my stuff. Maybe I will find it later. Uh, but anyway, let's move to uh, ABS. So uh, let's see. And that was not the one. This was the ABS. Uh, so this time I learned to purge more, so it's more consistently white. And otherwise notice that it's very fine, uh, even though ABS is a lot harder to print in. But we see this little fault here, uh, where um, this is where the printer stopped. So what happened was uh, that because I'm printing ABS in an enclosure, then everything gets warmer. That's the whole purpose of it. And there's a chip called the MCU, which got overheated. Once it hits 100 degrees Celsius, then it pauses the printer. Notice pauses. And then you can just click and continue. Uh, so it didn't destroy the print, but uh, it uh, made this small defect. And of course, I had to repeat the success and uh, I had the same issue again. Uh, there's a place where I know I have it uh, right there. So this time I had the same issue again. So what I did was I attached a heatsink to the MCU. And now even though the enclosure gets even hotter, then the MCU is only at uh, 80 degrees Celsius even when it's uh, mostly at the most stressed time, the printer. Um, so inside my enclosure, it gets up to 49 degrees Celsius. Um, you don't need it to be that hot for most things. Uh, 35 is plenty. So um, this is probably me just making it a little harder for myself. But anyway, the next one finished by itself. Okay, so I didn't find the right perch, uh, so I have another one. Uh, this was not the one I wanted to show you, but anyway, let's just have a look at it. So this is a perch block, and there we have it here. And it's for this medium size, we can see it stops where uh, it stops being white. So this perch block is uh, about the same uh, for all 
it's the only difference is the height it's about the same so for the, even the small one it's almost the same so the bigger you print the relative perch is smaller but still this is very small perch and actually i just got this out of um, i have this which uh, i just finished printing we can just have a look at so in this case i uh, i am using something called uh, i think sparse perch or something like that so that means that if you are not changing color instead of just building the tower more and more then it uh, takes the nozzle down and um, but that's an issue because if you reduce the set height then you might uh, collide with the our the objects you already have uh, so in this case you have to make sure the object is far away from it and especially you, you have to make sure that this is in the back and I made this mistake earlier in my first attempt to use that, but I will get back to that. But uh, just to show you that the perch can be actually very small if you optimize it. Okay, so let's continue. So um, after printing all these killer whales, it was time to test some Halloween stuff. Uh, so uh, what I printed was these guys. So first, I actually just printed these two. No issue, that was fine. Then what I printed was uh, this. And if you see, I forgot to make support for the tooth. But luckily the MK4 has uh, the option to cancel. So I canceled this object and continued and finished this one. And then afterwards I printed this one with support. So here uh, the MK4 saved me. So that was quite nice. Then I also wanted to print this, but here we have a print failure again. But this time, this is the first time where I would say, really say this was Bruce's fault. So what happened is that when it went to this layer, then it suddenly behaved weirdly. It just slowly moved the hair. Maybe I will link an unlisted video of me showing this. It was a quite weird behavior. So uh, I recorded this in the video you can choose to see. And... Um, and then I sent this video and my G code to Prusa, uh, reported it right away, uh, just so to let them know I had this very weird behavior. And I sent this at uh, 2200 hours uh, to 10 p.m. in the evening. And even just a few minutes later, maybe 15 minutes later, I got a reply. I didn't expect that, uh, but I got a reply say where they told me there was uh, the G code was corrupted. Uh, maybe it was the USB stick. Uh, anyway, I sliced it again and then I printed it with no issue. I then further analyzed what had happened. And uh, unfortunately, I had moved things around so I could not generate the exact same G-code to make a one-to-one -one comparison. But it didn't look like uh, the USB stick had corrupted the data. It was not truncated. It looked okay. So I think there was an error in Prusa Slicer, which we will never find. Uh, at least not based on my data. But anyway, I reported it to Prusa so they could uh, fix it. Okay, then let's continue my story. So then I printed a bunch of other stuff. We see these, these are quite funny. So these did not really need um, multi-material because there's only one uh, color shift here. But of course, that's nice that you don't need to get up in the middle of the night to make a color change. It can just do that automatically. But when you see you have this, then it will actually print a, a print tower as a perch tower right next to it in the same height. And that's quite wasteful just to make a small filament change. So uh, while I was, uh, I wanted to print this guy here. And uh, my first attempt we have here, because there I wanted to save filament by making such a tower, but unfortunately, uh, I didn't account for when the print head goes down and it has to go back and it collided with a model and I actually tried to continue that uh, make some g-code hacking and uh, it actually worked uh, I was able to continue the print but unfortunately I while I was trying to do this I trashed the head the nozzle down in the print bed uh, while trying to continue to that so that's why there's uh, some uh, weird stuff here. And I saw, okay, let's just cut our losses and uh, start again. And I also 
found a mistake in the model. You see here, the mesh was actually colliding, so I fixed that. And also I didn't like this orange in the button. So I didn't fix that. And so this does not have that issue and uh, it's quite nice. Uh, but I definitely did not save filament this time by using uh, the sparse uh, perch tower. And furthermore, I continued my mistake because remember I trashed the print head and uh, what happened is I wanted to print this uh, model here, but unfortunately, uh, since I had tra trashed the nozzle, then it uh, did not print this very well. We can, let's just have a look. If we look down here, then you see there's a layer that did not go very well, or maybe there was something in the, um, in the nozzle. Uh, anyway, I cleaned the nozzle, printed again, and then uh, it went out fine. And actually this one I printed because this was the first thing I printed for my daughter, but the, this was a completely blasphemy uh, to combine the Pikachu and uh, a squid. No squid or two or Pika squid or whatever. Uh, so I had to print this one instead. And anyway, that's actually all the failures I had. Uh, and uh, we actually see some more I printed here. This is in, all of it is in ABS. This one is actually in ASA. The top part is in ASA and the bottom bar part is in ABS. And IS is in ABS. So you can definitely just mix ABS and, uh, and ASA. There's no issue. Um, that's quite good. I can't remember, there was one of the my models where I messed up, uh, where I did not attach the perch tower good enough, well enough to the bed. And uh, then I actually paused the print and printed on another print, an uh, extra perch tower, uh, a replacement where it can con continue on top. And I printed that in PETG yeah, because that was, was, it was in my other printer. And I can say that the that ASA, you know, ABS and PTG does not stick together. Uh, well, it was good enough for making the purse, but afterwards I could just break it apart. So we also have a little snowman here. And uh, this was actually the only other part I have printed in the PTG. Um, and I tried to print this in ABS, but there we have the issue about the details. So if we just look, I have to use the same license plate here. Uh, well, uh, it is smaller, but in general, uh, it's not so good. Let's just zoom in. Uh, this is printed in ABS and this is in PTG. And uh, even though, of course, it's harder when it's smaller, there's also the issue. Uh, it's just not good enough. So printing in ABS is hard mode. All my ABS is five or six years old. It's something I had from uh, the time where everybody was printing in ABS. And uh, with this enclosure and the Prusa Mark IV and the MMU, it is possible to print it. Just remember to have a lot of high temperature and a lot of brim. I use uh, uh, 15 uh, millimeter brim uh, to be absolutely sure things uh, stay down on the bed. So that's possible, but it's not recommended by Prusa. They want you to just print in uh, PTG or PLA. So uh, let's come to a conclusion for all this. What is my recommend recommendation for the MMU3? I think the MMU3 surprised me. I have I have had the the MK3 for since 2019, early 2019. I have three of them. I have been very happy of the reliability of these printers. And I did not want to add a MMU to them because from all I heard it was that you took a very stable printer and made it a something very not on not stable. Uh, but uh, I have been positively surprised by the MMU3. So the only things where I could say, hey, this uh, was caused not by me, but Prusa was uh, the fault in the G code. And I actually also had two times where uh, it stopped. One time where I had to cut the filament just uh, to, to make it work. And another time where there was a debris from a previous filament in the tube that uh, clogged it. And that is all the issue I had for printing all these 
models. So I will definitely say that the reliability of the MMU3 in my case has been uh, very, very good. And of course, this one I just printed also with no issues. Then actually, I would go so far and say that the reliability of my MK4 has improved with the MMU3 because what happens when the MMU3 uh, is attached to the MK4 is that every time the, the MMU4 is going to do its mesh bed leveling, then it retracts the filament. In generally, the, the filament is not in the nozzle when the printer is idle or, or shut down. So, of course, it's not in the nozzle when it does its probing. And since there's no filament in the nozzle while doing its probing, then you don't have the issue where there's some oozing that mess up the, the probing. It can be messed up in two ways. Uh, one way is that it detects that uh, there's filament in the nozzle, uh, outside of the nozzle, and then it just stops. That's a good thing. The other thing is that if it does not detect it, then it makes a bad... Uh, mesh bed leveling probe and then your your stuff does not stick to the bed and then your print is ruined and you have wasted your material so you don't have these issue if you have the MMU free because it retracts the filaments the other issue it resolves is just by having a Bowden tube to the top of the printer then while it's uh, moving the header down then there's nothing pulling the head, so it doesn't think that it hits the bed. So, generally, you just start your printer, go to work, and then eight hours later, you come back, and then there was four minutes left of this nice squid, so I could just see that he finished. So, the reliability of the MK4 plus the MMU3 is better than the MK4 alone. Because when I had the MK4 alone, then I typically started the printer and I had to babysit that the first layer went down first. First, I had to pull down the filament to make sure that the head that went down uh, was not disturbed by that. And actually, before even before that, I had to make sure to clean the nozzle and even maybe clean it a while because there might be a little oozing. And then make sure everything, the bed leveling went fine and make sure the first layer is going down fine and then I could go to work. But yeah, with the MMU3, just start it, go to work or go to bed, come back and it's finished most of the time. So that's all for, my, for me and uh, my recommendation. I think if you have the MK4, it's definitely worth buying the MMU3, even if you're or mostly of the time, don't print multicolor. Just if you, for example, even though you might just print these where you could do a manual film and change, then it's nice that you don't have to do it. So that's all for now. Thank you.